Good morning. We are here at the LSINW 2014. My name is Andrew Serafini, and I'm co-chair of LSINW 2014. Sitting with me is Dr. Amanda Polovich from the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. Amanda, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, sure. I'm uh, on the faculty in the clinical division of the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, uh, which is a great environment to work in, I should add. And uh, my training really is as a medical oncologist with also a background in uh, genetics as well. So can you give a little bit of details about uh, your research there? Sure. The overarching mission of our work is to develop and implement tools to enable personalized medicine. So uh, personalized medicine, or in, in some other sectors, they refer to it as precision medicine. What, what was the inspiration for you to focus in this <coughs> nascent area? Yeah, so Andrew, when we train as physicians, we are taught to practice evidence-based medicine. And what I came to realize is what that means is we take populations of patients and treat them and monitor their responses over time. And then we plot the, those responses in graphs and look at the, at the median of those distributions, so what a typical responder looks like. And that's what we base our standards of care on. And the problem with this approach is that humans are wonderfully diverse and that most humans don't behave like this typical response that we have to base our standards of care on. And this is especially true in oncology where each individual patient's tumor has its own personality, so to speak, manifested as one patient's tumor melting away in response to a particular therapy, whereas the next patient's tumor uh, which arose in the same tissue and is being treated with the same therapy may not respond at all. This is also true in terms of side effects from treatments where one patient will get severe, uh, suffer from severe toxicity very quickly and the next patient uh, who comes through getting the same treatment will have so few effects that they notice from their therapy that it is very common for patients to express concern that they're not getting enough of a drug or perhaps that they're be being given placebo. And so every time I wrote an order for chemotherapy, it bothered me that I didn't know how that particular patient's tumor was going to respond. In fact, it would take many weeks before I'd be able to assess that. Uh, nor would I know the uh, extent to which I was going to do uh, damage to the normal cells of their body and they were going to have toxicity, despite the fact I had taken an oath to do no harm. And so. Uh, out of those experiences, I became very passionate about understanding the biological underpinnings of this variation and uh, using that information to better treat disease. Wonderful. Uh, years ago, uh, I had my formal uh, doctoral education at Stanford Medical School, and Stanford was, was one of two national centers that was sequencing the human genome. And uh, actually, my wife was part of the, the Stanford team uh, that led that effort on the <coughs> West Coast. People asked then, you know, so what's the value of getting the human, our human genome sequenced? Uh, will genomics and the availability of the uh, human genome sequence uh, allow you to achieve personalized medicine? Yeah, Andrew, I mean, genomics technologies and data have certainly whet our appetite for precision medicine, and certainly there are some examples of success stories there already which have fueled that. But the proteome remains a cri critical missing link in the story here. Uh, most diseases exhibit dysfunctions in protein-based cell signaling networks, and as a result, most drug discovery efforts, for example, are focused on or dependent upon our understanding of how protein signaling networks work and are disrupted in disease. And so being able to measure proteins is also going to be critical in order for us to realize personalized medicine. So I know that uh, protein networks <coughs> are very complex networks. Uh, is, it, is it easy really easy to measure uh, proteins? Yeah, un unfortunately not, and that's a major roadblock to personalized medicine. Um, remarkably, um, the vast majority of human proteins can't be reliably measured, and the community is dependent upon 30 to 50-year-old antiquated technologies that are wholly inadequate to support the needs of the post-genomic community. They can't be multiplexed. They're semi-quantitative most of the time. They um, are not standardized, and so there's poor reproducibility across laboratories, uh, and they suffer from issues with lack of specificity. And um, this has 
rendered the human proteome clinically inaccessible and is a major roadblock to achieving personalized medicine. All right, so uh, a scientist is faced with a roadblock. Are there any solutions now or on the horizon to solving this roadblock? Sure. There, this is actually a, a moment of great opportunity in uh, clinical proteomics. So in work that's been largely funded through the National Cancer Institute in their clinical proteomic program called CPTAC, my laboratory and a web of collaborators really around the world have shown that we can use a targeted form of mass spectrometry called multiple reaction monitoring or MRM mass spectrometry to solve this problem. Uh, this isn't a new technology. It's been used for decades in pharmaceutical research and in clinical reference labs to measure small molecules. And essentially what we've done is shown that we can stand on the shoulders of those people who have used this for decades and morph this technology over now to make reliable measurements of proteins that can be standardized across labs. And we can actually monitor signal transduction networks that way. So with most roads <coughs> and mo most trips, we have a triptych and we follow uh, what's our next exit? What's our next route? Uh, what are the, the next steps for, for you and your group? So we've recently uh, launched a community, open source community resource of standardized or well characterized assays and it can be uh, accessed through assays.cancer.gov and this is a portal that we plan to uh, grow in the coming years and it contains um, standardized assays for measuring proteins of medical relevance in human diseases and the goal is to not only disseminate the MRM technology but to facilitate standardization of protein measurements across laboratories so that we can render preclinical research uh, much more reproducible than it has been and enable studies that haven't prior, uh, previously been studied. And we're working now to try and launch international public-private partnerships to grow content in that portal, um, specifically thematic assay panels targeting uh, uh, disease-relevant cancer signaling, for example, pathways. Fantastic. Amanda, it sounds like you and your group are, are really on the cutting edge of, of one aspect of personalized medicine and uh, I wish you continued success and, uh, and, and hopefully success uh, for our region. Uh, so that's a wrap here uh, at LSINW 2014. Thank you again, Amanda. Thanks, Andrew. And you're watching the WBBA-TV.